what if this whole thing was like a setup like the for James Cameron to like uh all this technology was put in to cause like audiences to piss themselves in mass. <laughs> you <laughs> just all the water dripping and stuff. Yeah, or like the technology <laughs> that he's been developing for five years was to trigger everyone to pee their pants. Yeah, you know, he's like a piss head. Like that guy who, uh, the Tingler, you know, who would make those kind of movies where like you know, <laughs> he's the pisser. <laughs> or like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like he wants the theater at a certain temperature. <laughs> And he wants uh, and uh, free soft drinks, free unlimited soft drinks. Uh, I'm already getting uh, my jaw. My jaw just like all the tendons in my neck explode. Yeah, he's like, and also while you're sitting there, for some reason, all the armrests have water. You <laughs> stick your hands, like your fingers. In. Remember that like trick yeah, where when you're sleeping, yeah. you put someone's hand. Yeah, in water like and... that was on Mash. Like I don't know if that actually worked, but that yeah, that was that would be on Mash. They, 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 they did that to somebody on Mash. They did it to Frank Burns. The tingler. The tingler. The, the dribbler. The dri now, we're talking about Avatar 2, The Way of the Water. Is that it? Way of the, the Water. The Way of Water. The Way of Water. We were watching the original Avatar, you know, just to kind of get us in the mood. But now we're watching uh, this uh, old uh, um, documentary. documentary that Cameron did. It's from 2005. 2005. Okay, that must be the one I saw in the theater. It was like in 3D. Because, like, Titanic was, what, like, 98 or something yeah. like that? And then Avatar was 2009, and in between he did those two two undersea documentaries. Mm -hmm. Should have seen it coming. Yeah, talk about, like, somebody who just has built a career around their passions. You know, like, he's he's into this stuff. And that's one of the, th just to kind of get into the review a little bit of the movie, that's one of the things that was, like, how credible a lot of the Holy technology crap. and stuff was, you know, for, for as much of a, like, way out fantasy world that it was. Yeah, like, you'd see, you know, like, the talking whale or whatever, yeah. and then you look over and you're like, wow, this is, like, why isn't he patenting this, like, submersible or something? Yeah, this, like, I know, um, you know, the original Avatar wasn't, like, the merchandising bonanza that he thought it would be, you know, hugely successful movie, but then the tie-ins weren't as successful, and, but, like... Watching Avatar two, I was like, "I'd really like a toy of that." that. I and, know. I'm, and I'm looking, and there really isn't much. There, they, you know. No, I know. I know. We were talking. You, you mentioned this last time. We, they have a nice Lego Lego line. Yeah, there's some, some Legos, but the, some of the vehicles and things, you know, uh, that and then the submarine. They had like a very uh, credible submarine. You know, why? It's if only the, we, they'd have a Kenner line. Yeah, right. it's like the perfect like. Yeah. I could just see like, and just like all, all the launches. all the ships and stuff. They all have like a million little like pressure uh, valves and thing, you know, or some Avatar micro machines. Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah, I yeah like where you open, open it, up it up and it's like a little, you know, it's like Jake Sully's head, the head playset. <laughs> right, yeah, it it's Quaridge head playset. Mm -hmm. It's like Stephen Lang's head. I'm like, wow, look at that. There's scars on it. Or whatever. Now he had a lot of time to think this one out, and he did a lot of like really smart things because it's like. You know, it's not like a sequel that takes place like the day after. It's not like Porky's <laughs> yeah. the next day or something. It's like no, you know, we, you know, we're not looking to find out what happened the day after. Like, like a lot of years have passed. Yeah. And you know, somebody who might have seen uh, Avatar when they were a teenager probably has like a whole family now. You know. Oh yeah, because like in movie time they said it's a decade, but it's like thirteen years. Yeah. Ago, so it's pretty much like almost like lines perfectly yeah because that was like an interesting move because it wasn't like it wasn't like oh you know he's a super it's it, you know like um where they kind of keep people like perpetually young where it's like they never get married they never oh, have yeah. kids so it's like you know it's like the two of them just on adventure you know you would think you know it's it's like jake sully is still you know just this like single guy maybe he, he meets a new yeah. navi girl or something in part two you know like uh you know, like the indiana jones, jones. movies uh, and stuff but but no, it's like, you know, it's mostly family. yeah. It's a it's a family story. The people watching the movie, you know, have lived a lot of life since last time. So it's like he kind of took a chance because you know, I know that 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 is a, a little more of a risky move for like an adventure series to like kind of uh, domesticate the characters. Yeah. You know? and also the fact that he's going back to the like he's he did the huge Avatar. And then, like, with Sam Raimi, he seems to put pepper these, like, smaller movies in yeah. within his blockbusters. But James Cameron's going whole hog. He's like, yeah, I'm going to be tied up for the next 20 <laughs> years in these movies. Well, why not? Because like, he's created all these things that are basically, like, 
a money tree or whatever. Oh, like, yeah. you know, like he hasn't had to lift a finger on the Terminator series in years. You know, other people are doing all the, you know, all the work. So he, he can just sort of collect his little cut. You see? Uh, yeah, of, of all the Terminator movies they've made ever since and stuff like that. So it's like, what does he really need to do? He can, he, he just has to work on things he feels like working on. And this is like his passion. You know, yeah, it's, you know what it is? It's, you know, he's, he's an artist and like, you know, when he's in high school or whatever, I'm sure he's like doodling in his stuff. And it's like, these are, these are his doodles. This that, is like, you know, that's what he said. Fun. Yeah. You know what? Something just popped up on the screen there, Tom. Mm -hmm. it, like, it's Jake. It, we were talking about Jake Sully and yeah. it popped up on Jake cam. I bet you he just, na he was like named Jake Sully after one of these, right, uh, one of these guys, sub, sub, uh, submariners. Yeah. Um, the whole family thing, like it, it kind of, expanded the scope of it too like because it was like now you know you had multiple characters you could sort of follow their story and it's and you're also not clear like you know before it was like it's just the two of them you know yeah. and it's like okay neither one of them is probably gonna die or whatever but now it's like an ensemble so it's like maybe you know maybe jake's gonna die maybe dude one of the kids are gonna die maybe she's gonna die. you know it's like it kind of opens things up and, and you're not scared. even scared yeah you're and, and, and one of the one of the tensions becomes, who's the star? You know, because it, yeah. it, it, you know, it's like, am I? Maybe I'm watching, you know, the beginning of somebody else becoming like the hero of the story. You know what I mean? That's like it kind of so opens cool. things up. You know? And like, um, also, it was great going into this like not knowing mm -hmm. too much. I didn't even realize that was Kate Winslet. Mm -hmm. In one of the main roles until after the mm -hmm. movie like ended. And just like all the little details are so great. Like, you know, the the, the exosuits were fun. Oh my you know, gosh. Because talk about like somebody who kind of, um, you know, invented the exosuit more or less. You Hell know, yeah. kind of like brought the exosuit into the into the popular consciousness. And we saw that, that like early movie, that early student film he did. And he has the exosuit, exosuit in there. there. But I'm... he's he's like... Continuing to innovate on the exosuit, and he made like this, like lean and mean I love exosuit. that one yeah. with Edie Falco yeah. from the, this. She's like punching like uh, Polly Walnuts. She's yeah, like, she's like <laughs> drinking her coffee with it and stuff. And like, if anybody has carte blanche to like fuck with the exosuit design or like mm -hmm. expand it, it's James Cameron. Yeah, it, the whole thing was like Tarzan because, like, the Tarzan sequels. You know, the, like there's the first Tarzan book. And um, you know, what we think of as like the Tarzan mythology, it, it kind of comes later. Like like the first Tarzan book, it's like a nice novel. It's got kind of like twist ending and stuff like that. But then it's like the sequels where it's like, okay, he marries Jane. They have kids. The kids grow up. The kids have adventures and stuff. And it becomes like this family drama and and uh, you know this family adventure thing. And that's 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 what, what we're what, Yeah, what Avatar became. Whenever they go to the um, like the islands, mm -hmm. like what I. Like it was like, I was refreshing. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah. It, it, you a know, breath of fresh air. They, they had to do something to kind of like, you know, not just like, okay, we're back on Navi and yeah. here's here. Remember all those floating, uh, you know, uh, mountains. Here we're back. You know, uh, you think they have in like the later sequels? I think the next one's coming out in twenty twenty five. Though, where else could they make underground? Yeah, maybe? ice, ice, oh, fire, ice, fire. <laughs> you know, oh, like, shit, like some I... kind of volcanic, volcanic you know, avatar. The beginning oh, of shit. it was kind of cool because, like, you didn't know where it was going to go because, like, they had those, they had that sort of like planetary destruction kind of machines flying down and stuff. Yeah, real like apocalyptic stuff. How? Uh, and look at this thing. Like, of course, crap. you know, he sees some weird. Uh, weird jellyfish thing and it's like okay you know, the abyss mm -hmm. this is like where michael bn was uh imploded or whatever <laughs> he's like oh, i love that last hour of it too what an action like james cameron can like set up action like yeah, no the, other the action was like really seamless you know, like it wasn't like okay big action scene. The, you know like the, the, it had a nice flow and i think like this sort of like purely digital filmmaking where there's like no necessity for cuts and thing, you know, like like everything is just a choice. Nothing is like necessitated by by the technology. So you can have like a different f flow to things. And we, they got to uh, have a battle on like like you were saying about toys. Like mm -hmm. that would be like the a hundred dollar like <laughs> right. like the main one you'd covet in, yeah. in the Avatar collection. Yeah, that big like. I don't know, aircraft carrier or whatever it was. Yeah, it's like their USS flag. Yeah. Right? The 3D was great, oh, too. 
Dude, I, I was worried because like bad 3D kind of would make me like feel kind of ill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and there this were was a seamless. Yeah, it was it was good. There were a couple scenes where I kind of had to like rest my <laughs> me eyes too, for me a little. Too. Just yeah, I get a little bit of motion sickness, which is like that's why I didn't see the first Avatar in the theater because like when 3D when there was that 3D renaissance, I kind of held off on it for a while because I thought, you know what, I get motion sickness in Me all too. kinds of movies. Holy so shit. if I if I go to some 3D movie and start getting sick, you know, that you know, forget about it. So I just I just sk skipped it. And then after a while, I was like, well, let me at least try some of this 3D. So, you know, I, I, I forget what the first movie I saw in 3D, like with, the, with this like new batch of movies were. I, I never got to see any of the original, or like, not the original, but like, Remember, like, the early 80s, kind of, like... Early 80s, 3D. Yeah, I mean, I saw 3D stuff at, at Disney World. They would have... They had a thing called Magic Journeys that was... And, like, the 3D, was, the 3D at Disney World was amazing because it was, like, the full-color 3D, you know, back when that was, like, whoa, full oh, color, where, where it wasn't, like, red and blue. It was oh, every color. And then I saw Captain EO. Oh, yeah. You know, the Michael Jackson... Uh, Movie directed by Francis Ford Coppola, was it or it, was it Scorsese? Scorsese, it was or Scorsese. Was it Landis? Yeah. No, it was yeah, Scorsese. Or Landau, maybe. Yeah, Landis. Landis I mean, uh, Land Martin Landau. <laughs> directed Martin Landau. He directed it in his, uh, his uh, uh, Dracula. <laughs> but yeah, so, so like there was there was like state of the art 3D at Disney World, but it wasn't like it wasn't in the theater. That kind of stuff wasn't in the theater yet. It was like an Indiana Jones ripoff that was in 3D in the early 80s. Oh my but god! Like the, I know exactly what you're talking about. On the about. commercial. On the commercial, they're in this like pit or something, and then these like nails shoot out oh, of the wall fuck. towards you. And what it's is like, that? Guy? Oh, that's gonna look so good in three D. What is that guy's name? Like Alan Quartermain. It wasn't Alan Quartermain, but it was. It was like it that. wasn't Alan Quartermain, but it and, and uh, the the Lost City of Gold or whatever. But it was it was some kind of it, it was it was called like Searchers or something. I forget what it was. It was a bunch. Of, it was like a team. It wasn't like. There wasn't like an Indiana Jones. It was like a bunch of like adventurers, adventurers, and they were you know, and they had a little bit of like an MTV edge. Oh, to them. nice! When I was in college, they would have three D, three D projections of the uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. You could go, oh you could my go God, and see the Creature awesome. of Black Lagoon with like the red and blue glasses and stuff. This thing looks three D even without glasses. That thing's wild. That they, they, it's this like weird pink undersea creature up against this like blue blue background you see um qui-gon jinn and uh, uh yeah. things go zipping by <laughs> like they're uh a bonga or whatever they're called <laughs> you know an another thing like uh, like i liked that it was an ensemble and that you know there's good guys and there's bad guys but you're not a hundred percent sure yes. about anybody and what their motivations are and that at any you know any moment somebody could maybe do something that you weren't Holy predicting. Shit. My theory was that there was like uh, some human siding like Avatar that would uh, uh, or oh like a, like a, a like, Trojan horse or something like or like uh, or a, a human siding Navi that would uh, like a small contingent and they would find like Korg's body and then put him into this like evil yeah. tree Right, like the evil yeah. tree would like absorb him. I mean, not it, what what ended up happening wasn't too far, too far off, off. Too far off. Like, but he was interesting because it is like I'm just some thing they made in a machine. Yeah. That was wild when he got to see his own corpse in that like machine with mm -hmm. the arrows. And then he's like, oh yeah. When he saw the arrows, he realized he thought he kept thinking Jake killed him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just you know, really interesting kind of like layered story. You know, he had a lot of time to think about it. Uh, and then just like the basic thrills of it were really cool. You know, there were a lot of cool, um, you know, sort of flood scene. You know, scenes oh, where you're like, you know, the room's filling up with water. That's my stuff. nightmare. Like that kind of stuff. You know that, that, like those scenes where where that was happening. Like I was watching it, I was kind of like, oh, that's a nice, that's a cool set and stuff. Then I was thinking, like, wait, was there a set? Because the 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 sort of more. Um, like the less like fantastical kind of stuff, the more sort of like credible technology kind of stuff looked like it could have been like, like, you know, I, I was just wondering, like, is there like a set that he built of like, that's like flooding with this, like, you know, submarine or whatever that's yeah. flooding with water and there's actors in there and, and they're all wearing a bunch of dots and stuff. Or is this all just like purely going on inside of a computer simulation and then 
you know, the actors are just providing like their voice dialogue. Over. Yeah, yeah, it's like a voiceover on a cartoon or something. Mm -hmm. Or or like I wanna see the footage of like everybody like you know, up to their waists in water yeah. as like, you know, sort of the Titanic kind of stuff is happening where like you know, tables are turning sideways, and you know that'd be awesome. Like I did, I, I didn't see too much behind the scenes stuff. I, I was actually looking on here to see mm -hmm. if they had any making of it, but uh, yeah, you're right. They're like doing underwater stunts too, and they're doing like it's like a hybrid kind of yeah. thing. Because I heard that something about like Kate Winslet like broke some kind of like underwater like holding your breath record or something during this. Okay, well that so then <laughs> I guess that it was I guess there were sets. There were probably locations like real coral reefs and stuff, yeah. and yeah, everybody's wearing dots They're on dots. themselves. And, okay, okay, that's you it's know. like some, some it's like some yeah, kind she, of she didn't she didn't like hold her breath, just like identifying with her character as she's in the voiceover booth. You know, you can simulate anything, but it looked like there was some like GoPro footage, and and those yeah. those sub those like little mini submarines oh were gosh. so convincing. It seemed to me like like they he probably did have like some real real real, real actors ones built. Yeah, that, that freaked me out too when when the um those actors were in like the subs where they were laying down yeah. and the water was like right, floating yeah. in. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, kind of remind, I mean, a lot of stuff reminded me of like Jack Kirby. Like he would, Jack Kirby would have these like little one man submarines that like uh, OMAC or, or Captain America or whatever would like be in, you oh, know, God. infiltrating. Oh God, G.I. Joe. Yeah. I, it's like where on those submarines on like the, the side panels or the pegs for like to have somebody stand on the side. Oh, the, the stand-up pegs. The stand-up yeah. pegs. They're like, yeah. I'm like, yes, put two chairs on the side <laughs> of that thing. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, a little grip to hang little on grip. to. Oh my God. Yeah, especially like it's a good thing we saw this after um, Black Panther because we were like real impressed with like the underwater action and stuff in Black Panther, but it like it wouldn't have worked after seeing because like this like the underwater action is just like it's brought top to a whole notch. other level and yeah and like um, like there's some scenes like you know it's all like aliens and crazy wacky stuff, but it's um, you know th there's like real world analogs to these things. So there's you know a thing that's kind of like an alien version of a whale, yeah. and then. And then there's this like shark chase. It's like this, Very this alien creature doesn't look anything like a shark, but like it's basically a shark. Like it behaves like a shark, and it was the the most tense, like fun, exciting, scary shark chase I've ever seen in a movie. It you know? was it was. I had me on the edge of my yeah. seat. I, I can't remember. I don't remember the names of anything or anybody in that Dude, movie. I only remember, I, I just relearned when we watched oh. Avatar 1 that the main character was Jake Sully. Right, yeah. And that's about, and Natiri, right, and man. then that's about as far as yeah. I get. I kept calling, up until like three weeks ago, I kept calling the main character Avatar. Avatar, <laughs> right, yeah, there's Avatar, star of Avatar. Like, well, like the villain. I keep calling him Avatar. The villain, like when he sort of, you know, comes back, there's like the, the Navi villain. And it's like, when I think about him, I'm, in my head, I just see Yondu from Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> you know, that's who I picture. And then Stephen Lang's character, I don't I didn't know I, I think his name is like Quidditch or something mm -hmm. or Quar Quarrel or whatever mm -hmm. or McGonagall. But like up until like also three weeks ago, I I remember him from the movie The Hard Way with Michael J. Fox and James Woods. Mm -hmm. He was the party crasher. <laughs> he was like the killer called the party crasher. Mm. He's like, I'm here to crash another party. My only uh, qualm with the movie was that, like, so, so yeah, you're basically, it's like, um, you know, it's like, okay, you know, you saw Avatar and, and the world of the Navi, now we're, it's the, it's Waterworld, now we're on oh, Waterworld, wow. you know, else, but the, I, I just wish that the Waterworld, like, it was exotic and alien and this, these crazy reefs and these crazy, uh, undersea creatures, but it's like, you could have told me those were like real things that live like deep underwater, and I would have believed you. Like there was would have no, bought it. There was nothing like crazy, like where it's like, oh wow, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Like there, you know, like like um, you know, Avatar had all those like floating islands that are like you know on a Yes album cover or whatever. And I kind of like I wished there was like some like impossible stuff here, like like impossible what like just like something like like a big floating globule of water that's just like Holy levitating shit. in the air and then they like, you know, go inside it and swim around. There's all kinds, you know, like something like that. It's something that's like the, this like equivalent <laughs> to like the crazy like flying mountains, and, you know, like, like that's, that's what it was. It was just kind of like, 
well, this could, you know, this could just be a real coral reef on, on Earth, and, and it would be the same story. You know? That giant floating globule is a maze. That's a great idea. James yeah, Cameron, stuff like along that line. Something along that line. Careful, Tom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's going to be in the next Avatar. Right, yeah. Well, you heard it here first. A the, Avatar 3, the globule. The globule. Like, but having them on a beach, it was ground. I was, mm-hmm. like, able to, like, be like, okay... This is something I know, a beach-like yeah. area. Yeah, I can relate to I can to relate this. to this. I can, I'm like, yeah, I can relate to the beach. I put on, like, shades and stuff. Like, like you said, we didn't really go into this with any kind of knowledge of what was going to... So, it re- like, it could have gone any direction. And, like, and the way the movie starts, it kind of seems that way, too. Again, like, with this real apocalyptic kind of stuff. It's like, okay, are they just going to pick up stakes and go to, like, the next planet or oh. something? You know, like, wh- wh- where's this thing going, you know? What if they go under under the ground? Yeah, I mean, it, like know, the mines of Mordor. I, I mean, it's. I'm thinking ice. You think ice? Like ice? Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Or you mentioned the vault, like a volcanic. You see Anakin well, Skywalker. He's like, ah. that was kind of, just like the worlds you'd see in a video game. It's like, okay, you got the regular land world, you got the ice world where you're slipping and sliding a little bit, you got the water world where you got to go under, you know, oh, yeah, like Super Mario ice. or something, and then and then you got the fire, you know, the fire world. What exactly. if there's true air world? Right, like yeah, a real hyper air where, where like you're, yeah, you're walking on clouds. Like they have super dense clouds, you can walk on. There was some oh. stuff in uh, yeah, Interstellar oh, had yeah. some stuff like that too, where that. there there were these like sort of like floating ice layers on some of the planets that that, that oh, they yeah. kind of walk around on. It's a, I, I, I love watch that. that. We'll have to do an episode on that. Oh yeah, so. we have to do a Chris Nolan episode yeah. too. That I love that one planet where like the gravity caused like a huge like thousand foot wave, mm-hmm. and that and I love that little like robot that uh, yeah. Yeah, that little tumbling, tumbling robot. robot. Going, yeah. Or maybe like a big floating <laughs> crystal or whatever, and you kind of climb inside, and then it's like filled with water. Or something. You know, like so, you know what I mean, though, because it's like the the first one was such a fantasy world of like what you know where I'm, where this one what was a little, it, you know, you know, you you don't go from grounded, you don't go from crazy fantasy to grounded, you go from grounded to crazy fantasy, you know. We, uh, it, this is tying into the uh, next one of the movies we're going to be talking about, uh, Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. But Tom Cruise did like that little like sp- little uh, blurb before the movie where he's like, "We made this for you. With, like hundred ten thousand hours yeah. went into this, or like we use the best special effects." James Cameron did one similar when we saw Avatar. He was like, "Drinks are on the house." <laughs> right. Yeah. He's like so cranking want- up the AC. <laughs> he's, I want to see yeah, lots of water lot- sounds. <laughs> Yeah, line forms in the back yeah, yeah, to the uh, concession stand. You know, like, we're watching this um, this James Cameron underwater documentary, and this crazy, like, if this crazy stuff was in Avatar, you'd be like, oh, wow, you know, like, the, wow, nothing Sci-fi. like this exists. On it. So it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like... Volcanic vents down there? You know, underwater stuff is, like, so crazy to begin with. It's like, you've got to really, really, really pump things to the next level to make it, like... Okay, we're on we're on the underwater of another planet. You're right, Tom. Like anything in that movie, if somebody would tell me that it's real, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure yeah. thing. I, oh, I love the creature, the um, that thing that they could put on their backs to um, breathe. yeah, to breathe. That yeah. was a fun little uh, little creature. Look at that! All that stuff hanging around those hot vents. And it was nice that uh, they found a way to bring Sigourney Weaver back yeah. into the story. I uh, from an acting standpoint, she's probably having a good like. Thought it was a, f- a cool choice to play like a young girl. Like, right. Yeah. It's like when else are you gonna get that opportunity to play like a kid? Yeah. She it's probably like, had a blast. Yeah. You got to play somebody your age or whatever. So yeah. That, all those acting classes that, that you took like an in exercise. college or whatever. Yeah. We before we started filming, we were doing like a Meisner exercise <laughs> here. Like yeah. interesting stuff. Once again with Quaritch, like it's we're, I'm, I'm Quidditch, I'm Quidditch or <laughs> McGarnagle yeah, or yeah. Professor Mc, Sn- Severus <laughs> Quaritch or whatever. He's like Harry. He's like everything on this planet wants to suck your eyes out and kill your ass or whatever. Like I had a blast in the theater. Yeah. It was an ex- great experience. If you do see it, you gotta see it 3D. 3D. The 3D was amazing. Yeah, it just like I, I think they there's parts where they like high frame rate. And it was That's what I, I heard something about. There was like variable frame rate in it, and so like I don't, I don't, I don't even know what that. Like I understand what it, what something with high frame rate versus low frame rate means, but I don't, I don't understand like what it means in the context of like changing it mid movie. Like the, uh, I think most of the stuff was taking place during the underwater stuff. Okay, I think that's might have been when we were seeing yeah. like because I felt like like we were during some of those scenes. 
the screen was like a glass tank that could just like spill out at any minute. Yeah, because there's like there's some stuff that's like more real than real, and yeah, it was like. Now see, look, this documentary kind of ends with this idea of like going to another planet or whatever. So like we're seeing like yeah the origins of, of, of Avatar. Avatar. Doesn't that ship look like the one they they used in the, in the second Avatar when they landed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. This it's, is like the like proto practice. Avatar. I, I'd love to see like a space battle in Avatar. You know, like at some point they're gonna have to like commandeer some spaceships, right? Yes. Like, Would it? Oh, the Navi are gonna blow up. They're gonna uh, the Death Star. The Death Star. <laughs> He's like stay on target. It's Jake Sully. Yeah. I got an idea, or not an idea. But okay, I, so we're just we're just uh, giving away ideas to Jim Kevin. What they laid the little pipe? Them. They lay a little pipe in the, the last one with. Remember those robots? They made a point of showing where they were building the buildings. Yeah. What if there's some like like skyscraper action in the mm -hmm. next one where those robots are screwing around? Well, like, you know, yeah. If he takes like another fifteen years or whatever to do it, it's like okay, now uh, you know, um, Pandora is just completely <laughs> covered with cities and stuff. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm like, look, there's Avatar. Yeah, right. Yeah, Planet Avatar. <laughs> and and with your... the, the star of Avatar, Avatar, Avatar. On Planet Avatar, Avatar. with the Avataris. <laughs> like, and watch this documentary. He's, like, showing all these different planets. and Like, you know he's got a, a whole, you know, he's got whole books full of, like, okay, here's the next planet. Like, after we're done on Pandora, there's this planet, this planet. Like, like I... he's, he could, he, yeah, he could, he could probably, um... Like, he's probably got plans, like, beyond his own life. You know, probably, like, okay, here's how you do the, the 30th Avatar. Avatar sequel, you know, for his, like, great-grandchildren or something. It's like the, um, they go to the reading of the will, and mm -hmm. they have his head on, like, a television. <laughs> he's like, if you're, if you're listening to this, I've died. You're charged with making the next Avatar. <laughs> Shit, everyone's, like, angry. It's like, you're, you're contractually obligated. I was wondering, like, you know, like... If he has kids or, or, or it, like, I mean, you know, like how old his kids are and maybe he's writing about his grandchildren or something at this point. Because like, like all the, you know, the, the, you know, there's a lot of like sort of teenage characters and stuff. And there, it's a lot of like, dude, bro, bro, oh, dude. Yeah. There, there was, was a lot of that. You know, and it was, it, it also like brought me back to like young John Connor in oh, Terminator yeah. 2. Where it's like all these like insults and stuff, you know. He's like, we got skin. He's like. We got Skynet by the balls now, <laughs> right? Yeah, he's like, like and, and it just it kind of reminded me of like my my nephews and stuff. Like, uh, hey, hey, bro, hey, dude, bro, hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, dude, dude, there bro, was, bro. Also, was they, were they mentioning butt a lot in there or something? Yeah, hey, Lord, butt, you know, Lord, butt. Like it felt like uh, early '90s, like Bart Simpson insults and stuff. But I don't know if that's you know, it's like just judging from like my nieces and nephews, it seems like. That kind of stuff's made a comeback, the sort of 80s and 90s. Because Spider, Spider was like, eat my shorts. Then <laughs> yeah. they were like, you don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> you know, watching, you know, old uh, Power Rangers and stuff, it's always like, these teenagers with attitudes. Oh, you know, yeah. like everything, everybody's got to have an attitude <laughs> in like the early 90s and stuff. And that was, that is like a difference between like the Sentai series and the, the, the you know, the Power Rangers. Because like in the Sentai series, everybody's kind of like a good citizen they're very earnest and does their best and then it's like four teenagers with attitudes <laughs> you know, we're it's looking like, for teenagers with fuck, attitudes fuck off mom and dad or yeah, yeah fuck the system <laughs> fuck, the fuck the you system. mom and dad and fuck you uh, who's the guy Ernie that runs the ranger group he's yeah. like <laughs> yeah. give me my fucking milkshake yeah. Ernie or whatever yeah. Joey Tata jo from uh, <laughs> the peach pit in uh, 90210 I wonder if he ever went because it's Joe E. Tata. I wonder if he ever went as Joey E. Tata. <laughs> Joey, Joey e. Tato. <laughs> They're like, give me my fucking milkshake, Ernie. <laughs> you fucking d dumb dipshit. <laughs> you did you call cry? Ma a dipshit? <laughs> oh my god, this is amazing. We got Skynet by the balls now, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it it you know like. <laughs> He's got he's got a voice he's got a body of work and so so I don't know if he's like just going off his memories of like you know his kids in the nineties or whatever or if if this is like you know if, I mean I, like I again I don't know anything about his life so I don't know if he you know he might have a whole new set of like he's got uh, many children I think yeah I I know he has one with Linda Hamilton okay and I I, I who, who would have been like who John Connor was based like you know. He, Hey, Dad, eat my shorts. Eat my shorts. Janelle and Todd are such fucking dipshit uh, step, uh, foster parents or whatever. Get Ben. Get Ben. He's like... So, but And so now he has, like... Because he has, like, his, his 
third, I guess, third wife. Or he's on his third wife. Yeah, I, I can't remember if he was married to Catherine Bigelow. Okay, but they were a couple at one point. I, I know he this, has a couple. This of is kids. this is turning into the TMZ, <laughs> the Total Recall. <laughs> it's TMZ. Instead of the Thirty Mile Zone. It's, yeah, I, mean, I was I was just kind of curious because it's like you the know, TRC. It, is he like just kind of writing? what he imagines teenagers or, or like are these like what his grandchildren are like or if he does have kids this age or or is he like one of these guys who's like you know a, a, a septuagenarian uh, you know chasing around a two-year-old you know yeah. changing diapers and stuff you know he's like I, i've been an arp member for like 20 years at this point <laughs> easy money or whatever right, and danny yeah. uh danny cooksey uh -huh. <laughs> danny yeah danny cooksey Cooksy, yeah uh Easy money. Yeah, he should have brought Dan. Like, if Sigourney Weaver can play a kid, bring back Danny Cooksey. He could play one of the teenagers, even though he's like 50. You know? Okay, Tom, I think we have our new mission here. Bring Danny Cooksey into Avatar 3. <laughs> Hashtag bring back Cooksey. That could be our next whatever happened to. It'll be whatever happened to Danny Cooksey. Holy shit, that's... You can cover his, like, Salute My Shorts era. Yes. And then I'll, I can cover his uh, Different Strokes, Sam on Different Strokes. Brilliant. Era. I can't wait. That's going to be yeah, a great episode. Gonna, and then we'll find out what he did, you know. <laughs> and we can maybe get him too. into the thing. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, ha we'll have uh, Danny Cooksey zoomed in. Oh, oh, Danny Cooksey, get in here. Like, he great acting in uh, Terminator 2. Uh, Robert Patrick's like, have you seen this boy? And he's like, I don't know. Yeah, I lost a bet about that because, <laughs> like, I, I was I had a bet with somebody because I did not believe that that was like that was Danny Cooksey in that Bobby role. Bobby Budnick yeah. from Salute Your Shorts. Yeah, yeah. So I lost it. It was like like we're talking and somebody was saying about oh yeah that was that was Danny Cooksey as, as I'm like no it was <laughs> you know fuck you no it was it was the kid from Big I thought I thought it was like the same kid who who played uh, Tom Hanks' best friend in Big. Holy like, shit, you know, that's amazing. That's who I thought it was. You lost the so bet. That is Danny bet. Cooksey. Yeah. I'm like Danny Cooksey, you owe Tom. <laughs> Like twenty yeah, dollars, five dollars or whatever. So yeah, uh, Avatar two. You know, I'm 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 ready to see the. I'm ready to see Avatar three. You know, it ends on a cliffhanger and so, like there's more to come. You know. So Avatar two was the way of the water. James Cameron was up to his tricks with the audience. The, the dribblers back, but in Avatar three, it's now <laughs> moved on it to shit. Shitting, and yeah. It's like, yeah, it's the lava. The, that's, that's what. That's where it's gonna be the lava. The the yeah, ma the movement the, of the mountain. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. He's like so, uh, the, the sludge, the the, the mud. <laughs> yeah, the mudslide, the the Manhattan mudslide, the uh, the Pandoran mudslide. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. They'll be in like the mud zone where everything's. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like the it's like the bubbles are popping yeah. like. <laughs> so yeah, I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, and Fantastic Four Grand Design. I'm Matt Scioli. And you've been watching the Total Recall Show. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey or on Instagram at Tom underscore Scholey. Follow me on Instagram at Cinema underscore Tomb. And, and we'll see you at, at Avatar 3, the the the, 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 the Pandoran Mudslide. The Pandoran Mudslide. The Fright Zone! <laughs>